What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to utilize an Amazon Kindle for learning Japanese. So first I'm going to be showing you guys how to get thousands of books for your Kindle for free. Then I'm going to be showing you how to get a whole bunch of Japanese to Japanese dictionaries for your Kindle. And then finally I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the Kindle for sentence mining. Now before I get into that, just to talk about why the Kindle is so cool for a few minutes. Um, it's really because of the screen. Now I don't think you're going to be able to tell just from me holding it up to the camera like this, but when you look at a Kindle in person, it doesn't look like a screen. It looks as if the text is actually printed on there. And the first time I actually saw a Kindle, I was blown away because I just couldn't believe it. It really doesn't look like a screen. And there's special technology that allows it to, to look so much like actual paper. I don't even really understand how it works that well, so I won't try to explain it. But basically it's nothing like looking at a, at a normal screen. Like before I used to read with an iPad, that had a retina display and it was really nice. It was much better than the computer screen that I was using, but still I was looking at a screen and I could, I felt like I was looking at a screen. Whereas with the Kindle, it really is similar to paper. And so this is really awesome because there's so many benefits to using eBooks. Like you can just click on a word and instantly get the definition. You can save whole sentences for later and then add them to Anki. Yet a lot of people just don't like that sensation of looking at a screen they would rather look at paper and so with the kindle you really get the best of both worlds and that's why it's so awesome personally i wish i would have upgraded from the ipad much earlier because i was underestimating how big of a difference it would make now of course there's a lot of different models of kindles out they've been making them for over a decade i think and there's a bunch of different versions and models and stuff but really i don't think it matters too much which one you get because they all have the similar screen and that's the important part and uh, you know, th there's other little features that some of them have and some of them don't. Like I have the Kindle Oasis 2, which I think is like the mo nicest, most expensive one. But honestly, it's probably not worth the money. Like I think the Kindle Paperweight is almost the same in terms of features and stuff like that. And it's much cheaper. You, you can get Kindles for, you could probably get one for 50 bucks on eBay. So without further ado, let's get into how to get Japanese books for your Kindle. Okay, so let's just talk about how ebooks and the Kindle works real quick. So there's basically two different ways to get an ebook onto your Kindle. The first is to actually buy it from the Kindle store and then have Amazon send it to your device directly. The other is to go out of your way to obtain an ebook file on your own and then manually drag and drop that ebook file onto your Kindle device and then you will be able to read it. Now, in that second scenario, when you are obtaining an ebook file and putting it onto your device, you have to make sure that it's the right format because ebooks come in many different formats, but there's only two formats that are compatible with Kindle, and that is Mobi files and AZWT files. So one of the things I'm gonna be showing you in this video is how to convert other files into the Mobi format so that you can put it onto your Kindle. And one other thing that you wanna keep in mind is that when you buy a book from the Kindle store, it's gonna come with what's called a DRM on it, which is basically a lock on the file that makes it so that you can only open up that ebook file when you're logged into the account that you use to buy the file. And this is basically to prevent piracy so that you can't just send the book to your friend and then he can read it as well and then you both got it for the price of one. So another thing I'm gonna be showing you in this video is how to remove the DRM from files so that you can do whatever you want with them. So now let's actually jump into the details. Okay, so the easiest way to get a book on your Kindle is probably to make an account on Japanese Amazon and then just buy a book directly from the Kindle store. That way it will just get sent straight to your Kindle and you can read it. This is also uh, the legal way to obtain books. Now there's one problem with this and that is that you can only be logged into one Kindle account at a time on one Kindle device which means that if you are like me and you have an American Kindle account where you have English books and then a Japanese Kindle account where you have Japanese books, then basically if you wanna read one of your English books, you have to log out of your Japanese account on your Kindle device and then delete all the Japanese books off your device. And then when you want to go and read a Japanese book, then you have to log out of your American account and delete all the English books off your device. And this is really annoying. So you probably will want to be logged into both accounts at the same time, but that's not possible. So one thing that I do personally to get around this is that I just stay logged into my American account on my actual Kindle device. And then what I do is I just download the files from the Japanese Kindle store. I remove the DRM and then I just drag and drop them as if they were just uh, an ebook that I got from, from some other website. 
And so today I'm going to be showing you how to do that. So you're going to need to install two programs to do this. One is the Kindle reader for computer. So there is a, a desktop reader for Kindle that, that you can download and then you can just read your, the books in your Kindle library on your computer. So I'll put a link to that in the description. And the second is Calgary, which is a really powerful ebook manager, which is free which you can use to convert books between different files and take the DRM off of files and so on. And so I'll put a link to that in the description. You want to install those. So basically what you want to do once you have those installed is open up the Kindle reader, log into your Japanese Kindle account, and then you should see all the books which you have paid for. Now, when you open up one of the books, what that actually does is download it onto your computer. So once you open up the book, then you can close the program. You don't need it anymore because all we were really using that program for was to obtain the actual file of the book so that we can then remove the DRM and do whatever we want with it. So once you've opened up the book in the Kindle reader, it's going to put it into a folder in your documents called my Kindle content. So go to your documents. Uh, find the folder my Kindle content and then you should find that for each book which you opened up in the program you should have a folder which has some weird name of random numbers and letters. Now each one of these folders represents one of the books and you should be able to tell which one is which based off of the uh, date of when it was last modified because the last modified one will be the last one that you download. And then if you open that up you'll find that there is a .azw file and this is the book. So now what we're going to do is use Calibri to remove the DRM and convert it into the, the right type of file format. Now, once you install Calibri out of the box, it's not going to have the feature of removing DRMs. That's actually a plugin that you have to add manually. And so I'm going to have a link in the description for a plugin that removes DRM. So let's go and download that and look at how to install that. So here is the site. You want to just click on this download link, click on uh, this download link on the GitHub page. And then I'm just going to open up this zip file, select a DEDRM Calibri plugin. And then I'm going to take the zip file inside of that and then just put that on my desktop. Now you don't have to unzip this zip file because Calibri is just going to take the whole zip file and do whatever it does with it. So Go to Calibri, go over over here to settings. Now scroll down to plugin right here. And now you want to click this button right here, install plugin from file, and then choose the DEDRM plugin.zip on your desktop or wherever you put it. Click yes. And then it's going to say, okay, it was installed successfully. Please restart Calibri. So click okay. Make sure you click um, Tikio or whatever it says in your version. Um, not just exit, because if you just exit, it might not save the settings. And then close. And now let's close Qualbury once. Open it again so that the plugin takes effect. And okay, so now it's ready to go and remove the DRM. So in order to remove the DRM in a book, uh, all you have to do, I'm just going to delete these. So that I don't so that I, I don't get any repeats. All you have to do is drag and drop the book onto this main area, and then it will automatically convert the book to the right format and also remove the DRM. So when we drag and drop it, then we see right here we have fast and slow, the Japanese translation. That was the book. And now it should be ready to go. So basically, all the books in your Colby library, which you'll see in this main window, they are stored in another folder inside of your documents. So now that the book exists inside of Qualbury, we can go back to our documents, go to the Qualbury library folder, and then inside of this folder, we should see another folder for each of the different authors. And then within that book, another folder for each of the different books. And then if we go into that folder, we should find all the different files for the books. And we see that we now have fast and slow dot azw3. And this file will have no DRM and it'll be ready for us to put directly onto our device. So uh, you can see this is not the first time I tried to film this, so I already have one right here. But basically, if I wasn't there, I could just copy this, paste it to my desktop, and now it'd be ready to put onto my device. So if I did want to put it on my device, what I do is just plug my Kindle into my computer, 
then go to my computer, Kindle, and now go to the documents folder and you can actually just drag and drop it right here. You can see I already did drag and drop it, but you can drag and drop it right there. And then once you unplug uh, your Kindle from your computer, the book will actually be there. So here, let me show you. Yeah, you can see uh, right there. So basically, if you want to do what I do, you can take this strategy of staying logged into your English account on your Kindle and then buying all the Japanese books that you want on the Japanese Kindle store, downloading those to your computer using the desktop Kindle viewer app and then using Fulbury to convert and remove the DRM so that you can move them onto your device manually. I will also note that there is a feature inside of Calibri where if your Kindle is plugged in, you can click this button right here, send to device, and it will send the, the file uh, for the ebook straight to your Kindle. Now, this might be easier for a lot of people, but the reason that I don't like to do it is that when you do it through Calibri like this, it creates its own file system on your Kindle device where it has one folder for each author and then one folder for each book inside of each author's folder. And that might be better overall, it's more organized, but just for me personally, I like to have all my books in one folder. It's just easier for me to keep track of it. So I normally don't go through Calibri, I just drag and drop it myself manually. Okay, so now that we've talked about how to buy books legally, let's talk about how to pirate books illegally. So there's two main sources that I'm gonna be showing in this video for how to get Japanese books for free. The first is this pack of about 5,000 Japanese books in the Aozora Bunko format. So the Aozora Bunko format is a format for Japanese ebooks in which uh, each book is just one text file, but there's a specific syntax to the text in the text file so that Furigana can be displayed if you're using a special reader that is programmed to format these type of books. So there's been this pack of about 5,000 books in this format floating around the internet for a long time. In fact, I made a video on them a long time ago. And if you have an iPad or something, then you can get an Aozora Bunko reader and then read these books and it will look really nice. It will have the Fudigana properly formatted and stuff. But since we're talking about Kindle today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to convert these books into Mobi files so that you can read them on your Kindle. So I'll have a link to this pack of the 5,000 books in the description. I'm just gonna choose one randomly, put it right here. So let's say that we wanted to convert this book right here, which is currently a text file, into a Mobi file so that we can drag it and drop it onto our Kindle device. So there's this tool that I'm gonna link in the description called Aozora EPUB3 that just does that. It, it converts text files in the Aozora Bunko format into EPUB files, which is another ebook format. And then we're going to use a third program to convert the EPUB to Mobi so that it's good to go. So click download right here. It's a weird website. You have to like click download three times. Uh, there we go. So I'm gonna open up the zip file. I'm just gonna make a new folder on my desktop, call it convert, and then extract all the files into the folder. Now go ahead and open it up, and then you want to open up Aozor, uh, epub 3jar That's going to be the application. It's going to be this weird little tiny program that you can totally tell is made by a Japanese person. So what you want to do is mostly ignore all the settings. I think the default settings are going to be fine, like almost all, all of the time. And so you can read the settings if you want to and mess with them. I'm not going to show you how to do that. Uh, just click file select right here then maneuver to the book that you want to convert. So I'm gonna select this text file, click open, and now it's asking you to select the output. So I'm just gonna choose my desktop again. And now you wanna click Hang Kong right here, convert. And there we go. So now we have an EPUB file. So now we have to convert the EPUB to a Mobi so that we can put it onto our Kindle. Now you can use Calibri to convert the EPUB into a Mobi, but when I try to do this, 
the formatting gets messed up. Instead of being um, up to down and right to left, like a Japanese book should be, it is formatted as if it was a Western book where it's like um, horizontal text going from left to right. And so Googling on the Japanese internet, I found that instead you can use this program made by Amazon called Kindle Previewer to convert the book and it will retain the, the proper formatting. So I'll put a link to this Kindle Previewer in the description. I already have it installed, so I'm just going to open it up. Kindle Previewer 3, and it's really easy to use. Basically, here you can just drag and drop the EPUB into the program, it's converting it. Okay, here it is. And now we can go to file export. And then again, I'll just save it to my desktop. And we see, okay, now we have a Mobi file. So now if we wanted to put this Mobi file onto our device, Again, we would just go to my computer, Kindle, documents, drag and drop this on. And now we see that it is on my device. And when we open it up, we can see that it has the correct formatting. It's, it's uh, top to bottom, right to left, just like a Japanese book should be. So basically what you can do is download that pack of 5,000 Aozora Bunko books, take any one you want, use that converter I just showed you to turn it into an EPUB, and then use Kindle Previewer to turn that EPUB into a Mobi file, and then put it on your Kindle and read it. So the other way to pirate Japanese books that I'm gonna be showing you guys today is the DGT library. So this is basically just a website that hosts tons and tons of pirated Japanese books. I think there's thousands on here. The whole thing is basically just one super long web page that is just a list of Japanese books and a link to download them in various formats. Uh, and there's also an option up at the top to actually download the entire site if you want to do that as well. And so basically all you have to do is scroll down, find a book that you want, and then see what formats it's available in. So we can see right here in the corner, each book is available in various formats. A lot of books will already come in either Mobi or AZW3. And these are the formats that we can dump directly onto our Kindle with no work. But there'll also be some books that don't come in one of those files and we'll have to convert them. So for example, uh, let's try to find one. So. Like, oh, here, this one. This one's only available in EPUB. So what you can do is download the EPUB and then just like I showed you uh, a minute ago, use Kindle Previewer to convert that EPUB into a Mobi and then you'll be ready to go. You can just drag and drop it. So it's pretty much that simple. Here we go. Yeah, we just download it. Um, this is just a, a, a great resource. <laughs> I mean, it's piracy, but as far as language learning goes, Feel lucky that you're learning Japanese because we have some killer resources. Okay, so now that I've shown you guys how to get books for your Kindle, now I'm gonna show you how to get monolingual dictionaries. So when you get your Kindle out of the box, it actually comes with one Japanese monolingual dictionary, which is Daijisen, which is pretty good. I mean, it doesn't have pitch accent, which sucks, but it works. But when it comes to functioning monolingually in Japanese, the more dictionaries you have, the better. So I'm going to show you how to get close to 10 different monolingual dictionaries. Okay, so basically this guy Oleti created this tool that allows you to take Epwings, which are Japanese dictionary files, and convert them into Mobi files that function as dictionaries for Kindle. Now, if you look here, here is the process that you have to go through. It's a little bit of a long process. And the first step in this process is actually to use Yomi-chan import to turn the Epwings into JSON files. And so if you, this doesn't make any sense to you, you don't really have to worry about it. But basically, um, Yomi-chan import is the tool that comes with Yomi-chan that allows you to turn Epwings into JSON files because Yomi-chan runs on JSON files. But Yomi-chan import doesn't work for every Epwing out there. It only works for a select few, which are the ones you see here on the screen. Now, because a lot of people wanted to use Yomi-chan with other dictionaries like Shin Meikai and the NHK Accent Dictionary, Yoga-chan, Yoga-chan,
Yoga actually went out of his way to create custom JSON files of Shin Meikai in the NHK Accent Dictionary uh, that work with Yomi-chan. And so we're going to be able to use those as well. And recently, Yoga also went and created his own pitch accent dictionary that combines the pitch accent information of the NHK Accent Dictionary, Daijidin, and Shin Meikai, in addition to this other really good pitch accent website, Wadoku, to create kind of the ultimate pitch accent dictionary. And so we're going to be able to get all of these dictionaries plus Shin Meikai, the NHK Accent Dictionary, and Yoga's custom pitch accent dictionary thanks to Yoga. And so basically, because this whole process is kind of long and kind of, kind of convoluted, it took me a while to actually get it all figured out. I just went ahead and created the final movie files for every dictionary that it's possible to get. And I just uploaded those and there's a download link in the description. So all you have to do is download these dictionaries and then drag and drop them. So what I would do is go to Kindle, go to documents again, just make a new folder and call them, call it dictionaries and then just drag all these dictionaries inside of there. And that's all you have to do. Um, your Kindle device will know that these are not normal books. They're actually a dictionary. And as I'm about to show you in a second, they will automatically function as dictionaries. Okay, so here in Kindle, if we highlight a word and first see, we get the digital Digisend definition. But if we click on where it says digital Digisend and for example, choose um, any of the other dictionaries. So compiled accent dictionary, you see we get the pitch accent. And then next time we look up a word, it's actually going to remember which dictionary we used last time and show us the entry for that one. And so basically it's as simple as that. You can choose which dictionary you want and then it will just start using that one until you change it again. And so now you have uh, way more options, including ones with pitch accent. So yeah, pretty awesome. So now let's talk a little bit about how to use a Kindle for sentence mining. So it's very easy in a Kindle to just highlight sentences or whole paragraphs. And there's actually a built-in feature uh, in the Kindle where if you go to read.amazon.com, you can see a list of all the different sentences that you highlighted. And you can easily copy those and then paste them into Anki and make cards. The only problem is that only books which you bought directly from the Kindle store and sent to your device from the Kindle store will show up on read.amazon.com. So for example, if you got a book from the DGT library and put it on your Kindle and then highlighted all the I plus one sentences, when you go to read.amazon.com, those sentences aren't gonna show up there at all. And so there's a way to get around this using third-party websites. There's third-party websites that will go into your Kindle and take all the highlights and let you copy and paste them uh, as if that you were on read.amazon.com, except it works for all the books, not just the ones that you got directly from the Kindle store. And so now I'm gonna show you how to use this service. Okay, so right now on my Kindle, I'm reading Paru Muno Soling. And let's just highlight some sentences and then see if we can access them on the computer. So first, let me just, uh, this sentence that starts with Yatto koto miwi ni shite. Then, get this one that starts with Kore hodo mazushi fransu gun to tomu ni. And then one more. So, but this one starts with Inaka de wa warabuki no iye no kaduguchi de wa 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 wa. So now I've plugged my Kindle back into my computer, and if we go to my computer, Kindle Documents, there's now a text file myclippings.txt, and if we open this up, we can see the sentences that we mined from the book. Now we could just copy this straight into Anki, but another option is to use the service clippings.io which we can make a free account on and then import our clippings by just going over here to import, click to upload, and then choose that myclippings.txt. And through doing this, it will import all of our sentences in a kind of easy to view manner. And here, here are the three sentences. And the nice thing is that as we turn these into sentences or whatever, we can delete them from clippings.io. And then even if we highlight more sentences later and then re-import the my clippings, it's not going to re-add sentences that we already learned because it's going to keep track of which ones we already deleted. So that's why using clippings.io can keep things more organized and make it easier to use a Kindle to sentence mine. So that's about it. That's how you acquire books 
add multiple dictionaries and sentence mind with a Kindle if you're learning Japanese. So come check out my Patreon and spend all that money that you're not spending on books over there. And I'll see you next time, guys.